Hey guys, I'm Dr. Trey Hodge. I'm accompanied by Justin Muir, and we are going to be discussing intermittent fasting as far as the pros and cons, and as far as the approach of it. I find that the intermittent fasting seems to be a little bit better for some of the lifestyle clients that um, are very busy, have a demanding job. Some of the other benefits to the diet is that it basically with a with a inflammatory condition like something like I have like arthritis or um, if you have uh, like ulcerative colitis, some of those um, different inflammatory conditions, you can kind of help some of those conditions by limiting the amounts of time that you're actually eating because when you're fasting you're not consuming the products that are basically causing you uh, problems for the most part. Um, so inflammation is a huge one. Um, digestion is another um, important benefit to intermittent fasting. The digestion seems to um, kind of be a little bit better because your your body seems a little bit more primed and ready to go. You're, you may be a little bit insulin sensitive, so if you're kind of doing some fasting, you're gonna, your insulin levels are gonna be a little bit better um, able to react to when you actually do eat. You know, as far as the cons and the cons that, you know, I see and I find with intermittent fasting is the fact that if we're doing it on a daily basis and we're only allowing, say, for instance, a six hour, eight hour window like some people do with eating, you do allow the body's metabolism to do some yo-yoing effects because your body's always in preservation mode. It's all about survival. It's all about adapting. So when it adapts, it's going to drop that, you know, your base rate a little bit so it can hit survival mode, you know. So, you know, that's the only problem see in a lot of people of course lose weight a lot of weight usually in the beginning and then it does eventually plateau uh, another problem I see is because we allow the body to get into that starvation mode with the fasting a lot of times it's the personal food choices um, sometimes people will now take you know something based on what they have a taste for and of course usually what they have a taste for might not be what we consider to be you know pretty healthy for them um, I've, I've seen cases where someone will you know eat from 2 p.m. to like even like 8 p.m. and they're eating things like ice cream, Oreos and stuff like that and they're feeling like okay well as long as I'm fasting every day I can eat the stuff. So in their mind they're merely allowing themselves to be able to eat food, even more food in that time period. And of course you know you imagine going from a point where like just say you're you know you allow your insulin sensitivity to be better but you know, of course, if someone was doing a diet, right, it would actually be helpful. But in some cases, if they're taking so much sugar in a short period of time, then that's where it can hurt them too. So that's the thing is like the limitations that you allow yourself with, you know, with that. And that's why I say the cons would be. And I still think you want some form of like, you know, micronutrition coming through, not necessarily calories, but I would say something like, you know, a BCA based, like a, you know, like if I was to do it, I would use EA Amino Max with Performance Labs. If I was actually doing it, now I've done intermittent fasting, but more as a cleansing for myself. And during that process, I would, you know, I pretty much would drink just nothing but water. And then every, I say every, 20 ounces, you know, I would do 20 ounces of water and then 20 ounces I'll add some EA amino at max actually to it, just at least know I'm getting something that's gonna help preserve and not actually burn into muscle tissue. Um, so that's the way I view it. And so I, I really, but as far as an ongoing diet, I'm a little bit hesitant to really prescribe that for someone.